Hey guys, welcome back and thanks as always for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Peace Duke. This is a new offering from Custom Knife Factory uh, designed by Anton Malashev, um, also goes by Taos, Toas, one of those things. Anyway, so again, their newest offering, um, it's kind of a new design philosophy for them, a short, compact, overbuilt knife. Um, I think this is possibly their smallest to date in terms of uh, length at least. So anyways, I'll show you quickly what it ships with and then we'll go through the specs, overall impressions and details as always. So branded pouch, certificate of authenticity, branded cloth, additional pocket clip. And the reason for that is that uh, the pocket clip follows the shape of the knife. And so if you were to flip this over to the other side, it would it wouldn't work. So they give you uh, an additional clip for the lefties here so that it sits correctly on the knife. And they include some additional screws, um, sticker, and then, uh, funny enough, they included a branded chocolate. So unnecessary, but fun nonetheless. So let's get all that out of the way and we'll go through the specs. I'm going to bring in a comparison here as we talk about the specs. So uh, here next to the Peace Duke, we have the ZT0456. And as you guys can see, these things are pretty much neck and neck in terms of size. So uh, similar design philosophy as well. Short, stubby, overbuilt knives. So uh, spec wise, we have blade length of just a smidge over three inches, handle length of about 4.3. Overall is about 7.4. Blade thickness here on the Peace Duke is uh, 0 0.155 inches. Pretty close to the 0456. And then handle thickness is 0 0.57 inches. So it does weigh in at 5.45 ounces. Thanks to quite a bit of skeletonizing here, as you guys can see. So it is coming in lighter than the 0456 for that reason, which does not have any skeletonizing. So anyways, uh, blade steels M390, um, titanium handles. This one has the unidirectional carbon fiber uh, inlay here. Some of the other models or the other variants of this model have C-Tech or shredded carbon fiber in various colors, red, blue, green, purple, so on and so forth. So yeah, titanium pocket clip, titanium backspacer, and yeah, that should do it for the specs here. So overall impressions, you know, much like the 0456 here, again, short, stubby, overbuilt, unapologetic. Um, let me tell you guys real quick about the name. I think the name uh, kind of speaks to the uh, design or my overall impressions of this knife. So the Peace Duke, where does that name come from? Why was it named that? Uh, one of my viewers, Dimitri, was kind enough to explain to me that Peace Duke in English is very similar phonetically to a word called Peace Duke or a word Peace Duke in Russian, which means little mother effer. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it just describes this knife perfectly. It is a little mother effer. It's just, a, again, that brash and unapologetic overbuilt uh, stubby little knife. So anyways, fit and finish is excellent. Um, if you're into these types of knives, then uh, I think you're going to love it. Again, I think the, uh, the 0456 has kind of proven the design concept along with the ZT0900 um, and people seem to love the size. So yeah. So again, well done. Uh, if it's what you're into, then I, I think you're going to like it. Um, I don't know where the hell I'm, how I started bleeding, but uh, alas, the show must go on. So uh, hopefully you guys aren't queasy with a little bit of blood. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so um, those were the specs, my overall impressions. Let's get into the details on this knife here. So let's start out with the blade. Obviously, it's a compound blade here. You have a high flat grind with a saber grind here on the back. Um, you know, I've already seen some of you guys commenting, you know, is it necessary? Is it useful? Does it hinder or help with performance? 
And, you know, I really don't know that I can answer that question. I can tell you in my use, with smaller EDC knives of this size, I'm typically using the kind of the front half of the knife anyway, cutting into boxes and envelopes and food products, um, you know, things of that sort. Uh, it might give you a bit more trouble if you're chopping an apple. But for EDC tasks, I think it's perfectly fine. So, you know, I guess, again, the concept is that the thicker um, portion here in the back is going to lend itself well to some harder use so that you don't have to worry about the thinner ground flat grind here in the front. Among custom knives, complex grinds or compound grinds such as this typically do command a premium in terms of price, um, and they are typically more limited. Um, you know, for instance, Dalibor Custom Knives, he calls these grinds his complaint grinds because he complains every time he has to do them. You know, again, is it more functional? Maybe, maybe not. But there is a great deal of interest in compound ground blades at this point in time. So I definitely understand why they went with it. It adds to the visual appeal. It adds to the, you know, personality of the knife. Absolutely. So again, it works for me. I have no qualms. I already know. I've already seen some of you guys, you know, discussing the merits of is it useful on such a small knife? You know, may or may not be. I think it just depends on your use. So that is the blade. Sheep, kind of a, what, a modified sheep's foot um, as far as the shape goes. Kind of a little swedge here up top. Um, there is some jimping here on the kind of the spine of the knife. Um, however, so you can see I have a long track there open position, you only have that small portion here. So uh, you can get your hands on it. Um, I think if you have smaller hands, it'll work well. But for me and my bigger hands, I typically just, you know, get all four fingers here on the handle and choke up a little bit to get my thumb on this uh, dip or this groove here. Now there is a choil, of course, so you can choke up even further and bring your thumb even more forward. And it just gets complete and absolute control on the blade. So, yeah. All right, flipper tab does have some pretty strong, some pretty aggressive jimping there. Definitely not gonna slip on that. So, nice strong detent. Um, no problems. I like, the, I like the stronger detents in the explosive action. So if you like stronger detents, you're gonna like this one. And then Nice and smooth on the, uh, I believe, ceramic bearings and ceramic detent there, so. All right, I think that's it for the blade. Only marking is the blade seal, which is M390. The, you know, one of the best steels you can get. This one's numbered, number 11. I think the whole run is limited to maybe 300, and they're only doing a certain number with each inlay, um, but I could be wrong. That's generally how they do it, so. All right, taking a look at the handles. Obviously titanium, stone wash, acid stone wash, some combination of the two. Nice wide uh, chamfering here all the way around so that there's no hot spots. And this knife does not have any hot spots. It has a really good focus on ergonomics, so. Yeah. Really cool, the uh, unidirectional carbon fiber there has kind of an iridescence to it. As the light hits it so blade centering is perfect of course lockup is about oh I don't know 30 40 <clears> percent <throat> stainless steel lock insert with an over travel stop so you can't hyper extend the yeah, maybe they're I think they're cut now this one feels a tiny bit higher um, but you have some nice um, you know, chamfering here on the inside or cutouts to make it really easy to get it to. No problems disengaging it, so. And they did do the lock bar cutout here on the inside, so. You know, for instance, typically, like with the Morph here, the Morph 4, they usually do the cuts on the outside. And as you guys can see, this one did get a spring clip in lieu of their standard uh, 3D mill titanium clips. Not sure why, I'm guessing it had to do with kind of the focus on ergonomics with the smaller knife here. As you can see, the height of that clip, again, versus something like this. Um, you really can't feel this in the hand at all. 
So it doesn't matter how you hold it, I, I simply cannot feel the pocket clip on this knife. It works just as well as any spring clip. <clears throat> great, uh, you know, great retention, goes in and out of my pockets without any problems. So it uh, certainly works for me. All right, the backspacer is slightly protruded with the gear pattern. Um, probably adds a little bit to the grip there, and then you do have a, a generous lanyard hole, so. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Custom Knife Factory will be at Blade 2016, um, bringing, of course, some of these. They will have the new uh, Tashi Barucha collab as well that um, I'm really stoked to check out in person, so. Um, yeah, if you guys are going to Blade, you can definitely go and check out this and all of their offerings at their table there. Uh, maybe meet Mike or Anton. Uh, Mike likes his cat, so you can talk to him about his cat, I guess. But All right, we'll call it good there. Um, again, just to, if you like these short, stubby, overbuilt knives, I think you're really going to like this one. Again, really good focus on ergonomics. Nice, strong, flipping action. Um, and different inlays to choose from. No screws here that I can see on the inlay, so it's probably held down with some type of industrial adhesive. I <clears throat> uh, forgot to ask about that. And yeah, thanks for tuning in as always, guys, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.